And I think that when we understand the track record of his hand, it's more impetus, right, for us to trust his heart. Yeah. Yes. You know, and I, yes. I think what we see in the scriptures is that Jesus starts it out with signs and wonders. He yeah. goes, I'm look at what I can do. And yeah. now come get closer yeah. right. and follow my heart. So years ago, over 20 years ago, my husband and I were living in Austin and my husband was not in vocational ministry. He was working for Corporate USA. And uh, he started, we both started having a stirring mm -hmm. that our time in the corporate world was maybe ending and that we would maybe be shifting into some ministry roles, but we didn't know anything about what that looked like. Yeah. And it was just a stirring, nothing really. We weren't pursuing it. We were just like, God, our hearts, this is this is really who we're made to be. We know it's in us, but there's nothing really there. Well, lo and behold, a pastor from Dallas who was just starting his little old church uh, in Dallas, Texas, I think it had maybe you know six pastors and a few hundred people was starting and he needed a, a business administrator to come in and basically put all the policies and procedures together of the church because it was growing so quickly. Yeah. Fast forward that church is Gateway Church, which has, <laughs> you know, 100,000 members online and 30,000 in church. You know, it's a huge yeah. church, Pastor Robert Morris. We didn't know it at the time. It was just this little bitty wow. kind of startup church. And so we had been called that Pastor Robert was needing and a you know, business administrator. So we were in the middle of renovations in our house in Austin. We had just moved from out of the country. We had lived in New Zealand, had our daughter there. I was pregnant with my second and we started renovating our home. It was our first home we'd ever bought. We're in the middle of renovations. Like nothing about our life said, yes, come move to Dallas. Nothing, right. nothing. <laughs> and so uh, I had on the way there, I had told my husband, you know, this is, we're, we're, we're exercising our faith by going to talk to this pastor because I didn't know who he was. We're just talking, but I'm letting you know, we're, we're not moving. So we go, we spend the weekend there. And I don't know if you know Pastor Robert Morris at all, but he is just full of vision, 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 vision. And so we're, uh, there for a weekend and it is just, and this is what God's going to do. And this is what God has, he's spoken to me about this. And, and, and we're just like, we have to be a part of this. Wow. I mean, th wow. this is amazing. We have to be a part of this. Well, in the back of my mind, I'm like, but I'm not moving. Right. And so I had this thought, well, God, if this is you, then you will give me the sign. You will sell our house in the middle of renovations, which it was high. You know, the, the market was really high. It, nobody was going to come and buy a house where the kitchen floors were undone and right. the bathroom was undone. But that was it. God, yeah. <clears throat> God, if this is you, then this is the sign I'm looking for. You'll sell our house. So we began the process of putting the house on the market and we get a call from Pastor Robert who says, we are, we are busting out the seams. We have to have somebody now you have to decide, are you coming or not? Oh, basically wow. the thing. And so we had this moment where we didn't have the sign yeah. I was looking for. <laughs> Our house, I don't even know if it had been on the market by this point. But we had the Lord yeah. mm. and we had his word and we had prayer. So we decided, we we fasted and prayed because he, he really needed an answer pretty quickly. And we sought the Lord on yeah. what we were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And what it taught us is... There is a cost to everything in the kingdom. When you commit your life to serving yeah. Him, there's a cost associated and you have to be willing to say, I'm counting the cost yeah. and it's worth it to me. No matter what the cost, yes. you God are worth it. If we, yeah. we knew we weren't just looking at a job. We were looking at a job. That's one thing. We'd be like, oh, no, we don't want this job. Yeah. We knew God was calling us into yeah. a destiny move, something that would change our forever life. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you're, when you're looking at that and you say, okay, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to you. I'm going to obey you. So we, we called Pastor Robert back, my husband did, and said, we feel like this is what God's doing. Mm -hmm. We feel like he's moving us here. And we have a lot to lose in saying yes. You right. know, this was a brand new church. We didn't know it was going to be Gateway Church. Right. You know, we didn't right, know, we right. didn't have that foresight. So we just had to go with what we thought God was saying God was doing with no sign right. to do it. Right. So we, except the peace that he gave. I mean, I, I was meaning like I needed a physical, like, hey, somebody bought our house and now that's how we knew. Nope, there was none of that. Yeah. 
We went wow. with what we knew the Holy Spirit was telling us to do. He was telling us to go. He was telling us to pack our bags. He had something new for us, mm -hmm. for kingdom work, for an assignment. And so we did. We packed up everything. We moved. We sought a mortgage on that house. We're in the middle of renovations. The house never sold for like over a year. Wow. It was very painful. Wow. We ended up paying money to get out of the house. I mean, it was a very costly yes for us. Yeah. Except that it really wasn't because mm. we're, we're no longer on staff there now, but for 20 years. Yeah. We served in a church that was had ripples effect through nations, yes. not just in yes. our community, but through nations wow. for the kingdom. And uh, it changed our life mm. to be there. Mm. And so we look back and it seems like a small price to pay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Seems Absolutely. At the time it felt yeah. like yeah. a huge price to yeah. pay, but it seems like a small price to pay for what we got out of it, mm. yeah. for, for what the Lord did in us and what we got to witness the Lord doing, not even about us, but the miracles we got to witness the Lord do. Beautiful. So I'm saying that story to say sometimes we can get caught up in, well, God, I'm only going to move if X, Y, Z happens right. because X, Y, Z makes it the most comfortable for right. me. Yeah. Right. Right. I'm only going to do yeah. this if I see you do this because that means before I take the step of faith, I'm already promised mm -hmm. I'm going to be taken care of. Yeah. Okay, well, sometimes the faith step yeah. happens when you don't know if the outcome right. is going to be yeah. okay. And are we okay with that? And yeah. I think today I wanted to talk about that part of our Christian walk mm -hmm. that doesn't rely on, boy, wouldn't it be easy, almost easier to get the sign? Absolutely. Yeah. Because it yeah. gives us that, okay, great. This I asked for a sign. He gave it to me. This is what we're going to do. And it's yes. great. Yeah. Well, you know what? It ended up being costly for us. We didn't sell the house for a year. We it it was it felt very um, unsettling to us yeah. to to call that home when yeah. we had a home somewhere else, and sure. and yet it was it it changed the trajectory yes. of our life. And are we willing to seek His heart, mm -hmm. even if we don't always see His hand at the beginning of what He's doing? There's going to be times in your life, I, I don't know exactly what it might be, but there's going to be times in your life where the yes that you give God is going to cost you something. You might have to sacrifice something. And the, the thing I would say to you is whatever that thing is, you might want to ask yourself, is that an idol? Why is it so costly to me? Why is it so hard to lay down? Is it something that I have said in my life, I won't be able to be secure without this, or I won't be able to, to feel adequate without this? So that's the first question to ask, is it, is it an idol, whatever that thing is? But then two, just to say, what really is any cost on this earth? When we think about Jesus, that He gave up everything for us, he died a, a gruesome death for our salvation. When we say yes to Him as a free gift, what we really are saying yes to is, I'll count the cost the rest of my life. I will give up whatever you need me to give up to serve you. But it might feel, in the natural, because we're all human, it may feel um, like a sacrifice, like really hard. And so I just want to encourage you, if you're at a place where the yes feels too costly, I want to promise you on the back end, you'll look back and that thing will be nothing compared to the glorious riches in Christ Jesus that He gives. The same thing happened to Barry and I. We were living in Nashville and we had a home, like kind of like the home I always wanted to have. Mm -hmm. It was just lovely. And yet we felt as if God was telling us to move to Dallas. Mm -hmm. And so I made my sign okay, Lord, if this house sells by the time that Christian would be going into second grade, um, and also there was a school that we wanted him to go to. We'd called the school in Dallas and they said, we have one place left in second grade. You need to tell us soon if you want it. We put our house up for sale and I'm like, it will sell this weekend. I mean, I just know it because I know we're supposed to go to Dallas. Mm -hmm. There's one place left in the yeah. school. Uh -huh. The house will sell. And, and it didn't sell. Mm -hmm. And it didn't sell. And we had to call the school back and say, um, you know, I'm sorry, but maybe next year, but we, but we can't come. And yeah. so they let the place go. Mm. So then Barry, maybe, I don't know, when, what, when does school start? Usually August? August. Mm -hmm. So end of July, Barry and Christian are in Dallas for something. And Christian's a little, he's going into second grade. 
I'm sitting at Starbucks with my Bible and I'm reading the part in Genesis where God says to Abram, get up and go to a place that I will show you. Yes. And, yes. and I'm feeling the same thing of it. And I'm like, Lord, <laughs> <laughs> Abram did not have a son going into second grade. Right. Hello. Yes. <laughs> this is a big deal. Right. And, that's and so, so it was real. just like, We're so silly, and we? what had happened in the meantime was at the beginning of July, our house had sold. And we're still not yeah. sure what we're going to do, but there's no place in the school, so we're going to stay in Nashville. Yeah. So um, I'm like having this argument with the Lord in Starbucks. And then the phone rings. And I see it's Dallas, so I assume it's Barry. So I'm like, hey, honey. And this person says, no, this is not honey. <laughs> this is um, Trinity Christian Academy. Mm. One place just opened up again. Do you want it? Wow. And I, so I said, um, can I have 20 minutes? And they were like, yeah, sure. So I called Barry because he's in and I said, can you, can you buy a house today? And he's like, what? what? <laughs> a horrible, horrible house. I'm like, to-do list. Let me buy a house. house. house was sold, so we had yes, the money. Right. I'm yes. like, could you, and he's like, well, don't you want to see it? And I'm like, no, if you like it, and Christian likes it, and plus one of my best friends lives there, I said, take her, if, if they yeah. like it. Yes, yeah. go for and, it. And so he went and he bought a house that day. Wow. And two Come weeks on. later, I love it. we are, flying and, and Christians going into school the next day and we touched it at the airport and it's still it's all so, so surreal you know when wow. something happens yeah. like bum 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 and I'm standing and this very elegant woman came up and said to me so he's called you here too Ooh. and she said just know the hand of God is upon you here and she left oh my goodness I have the, chills there are times when you don't get all the things lined up the way you think they're going to be lined up you simply go out of obedience to God yeah. When I was in my 20s, I used to think, and I don't know if you've ever thought this, if I could just have seen a miracle, I mean, it wouldn't have been amazing to be on the hillside the day that that little boy gave Jesus his lunch and suddenly it fed over 5,000 people. They only counted the men. So you're talking a crowd of eight, 9,000 people. Wouldn't that have been life transforming? But here's what I believe now. I don't think miracles change our life. It's an incredible thing to see them. I think obedience is what changes our lives. When we learn to keep following the Lord, to keep obeying Him, I think those are the things that become transformational. Now, do we every now and again get this amazing privilege of seeing God do something spectacular and we stand back in awe and wonder? Absolutely. But if your life is not full of the miraculous, but it's full of obedience, I think that's very pleasing to the Lord. I was gonna say that reminds me of Elisha when he gets this call and he doesn't like sell his his cows, he slaughters them, mm. he cooks them up, gives it away, burns his plow. Mm. It's like mm -hmm. I understand the cost, right? I'm all in. all in, and if it costs me everything, yes. I can't come back, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. And I I don't know. I mean, some some people might think, well, the house was still there. You could go back, but at that point, no, yeah. we've left it. Yeah, it's left it's it. it's like dung to me, right? I don't right. I don't need it. I recognize what's yeah. ahead of me. And especially because what was left, if you're looking at the heart issue, we left a job yes. to enter a call. Yeah, right. you know. Yeah. And yeah. so going back to a job was not an mm -hmm. option anymore. We had gotten a taste of what it was to walk into a destiny call. Mm. Okay, you know. Yeah. We'll talk about that because. People yes, don't true. really know, like when you get into your purpose, sometimes that's the reward. Even mm -hmm. just yes. living out the fullness of the call that's that on is, your that's life yeah, is the reward is rather than yeah. doing the other thing. That is why when we had to evaluate what it felt like loss, it was all financial, mm -hmm. which in God's economy, we talked about that earlier, it's a completely different thing. And so we really only had gain. The favor that was on my husband was just, it was, it was such a different season for him yes. to walk into that kind of favor and wow. and gifting that had anointing on it yes. yeah. that in a job it wasn't the same for right. him it's an important conversation because i i don't think it's it's not irresponsible to sure. ask the lord for signs we know sure. we've already yeah. established right. he works in signs and wonders yeah. but i do think there is that part of our faith yes. that needs to be encouraged to step out yeah. of the boat when it feels scary to yeah. do so, but our eyes are on Him. Yes. And as long as our eyes are on Him, right. yes. we can step out of the boat. But yeah. that's like, that's another sign. It's a wonder. Or you become the wonder, really. Because I'm thinking about Peter. 
he's like, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. I'm thinking about your story. Like, yes. okay, is this yeah. it? And the Lord says, okay. And he does do the little thing of, well, it was a big thing because the baby had to go to second grade, uh-huh. you know? Uh-huh. And like, he opens up the spot and it's like, I've bid you to come. You get the call yeah. from uh, Pastor Morris. That's a very good point. You yeah. know, yes. that yes. is, and, that and you is become is the wonder. Yes. Imagine yes. the person yes. whose house got bought that day. Yes. Mm-hmm. You became a wonder yeah. for them. That's you know what I mean? And point. sometimes, what if you're on the other side, thinking about that um, somebody's daughter died and Jesus went to go to yes. the daughter. But yes. on the way, this the woman gets yes. to touch his, his yeah, garment Jairus because he's on. Yeah. Jairus is, the, the, yes. His loss, you know, became yeah. a catalyst yeah. or a right. moment for this woman right. to right. get right. her healing. And, it's, and so I wonder if sometimes when we're asking the Lord for a sign, maybe it's not for us, you know, the sign is not really in us, but it's in somebody else. Thinking about ourselves and our little lives. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the the Lord is like, I've got a whole big plan and picture here and I'm working on the behalf of many. Our destiny in God is worth any cost, any price tag that God puts on it, it is worth it because your destiny in God is your life. And We have a choice, right? The guy says, I place before you death and life. Choose life. There is a way to live and still be dead. And it's by not paying the price of your life to trade it in for his life, for the life that the Redeemer gave us. There is nothing more valuable than the life that God has for us in Christ. There's nothing more valuable. And so whatever it takes, whatever it costs to have abundant life, this abundant life that Jesus promises those that that he, that he came to die for, right? That he came to live for. He says, I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. I didn't come to condemn you. I didn't come to put you in shame. I came so that you might have life and life more abundantly. If Jesus is willing to lay down his life so that we can have life, Oh, I'm willing to pay any cost. And I would encourage you to give up any and everything, right? Because it's all meaningless compared to the life that God has given us, the life that God has given us in Christ Jesus. He's worth all of it. Walking by faith and not by sight is so important because you don't know what else is going on, what other thing is in play. The faith isn't blind faith either. Like it's a, it's a faith that sees. You've seen God move before and you keep yeah. following in a faith right. that sees. I think that sometimes we, I don't know, at least for me, I used to, I used to ask God, like, give me, give me blind faith. And he's like, no, I only, give, I want to give you faith that sees. Yeah. I want to yeah. give you faith that sees me in the places of the unseen and, and able to follow him. I think about Genesis 12, Abraham, God, gives him this this the call before he gives them the promise and so he says go leave your family leave your friends behind leave everything you know and then he tells him i will make you a father of many nations and yeah. then abraham walks into famine like in that order right right in that order he gives him the call then he gives him the promise yeah. and then he walks into famine and the man stays in famine with his family for a while <laughs> and does not see the call come to fruition or the promise mm-hmm. he doesn't and so for us, and, and thinking about Abraham's journey, I mean, a man of faith and the father of many nations, our faith has to be a faith that goes before we see God move. Has to. Yep. I think we live in a very microwave society. You know, we just push the button and we want it to be hot right away. And, you know, in the same way, we, we want what we want when we want it, how we want it. We like to dictate a lot of our life. This is kind of our culture, to, to have more, to be more, to do more, and all of the control of, of us and our fingertips and what we can do. And in God's kingdom, it's completely opposite. He says, I wanna strip all of that away, and I don't want you to be able to make progress in the kingdom by anything that you can see. I want it to all be by faith. It's a completely different way to live, a completely different way to think, but it is the way of the believer because what is required is a complete surrender of your will, of your emotions, of your thoughts to give Him supreme control over all of you. Now, it feels like when you say that, that you're giving up everything, but the beautiful thing about the gospel is it's in losing your life that you gain it. 
So freedom is what you gain when you choose to live a, a, a life by faith. And you would think being able to see what's in front of you is the best way to live. But I tell you what, the joy that is before you when you choose to walk by faith is, is so amazing because you may not know exactly what's ahead, but you can be assured that the one who does know will never leave you, will never forsake you, and promises abundant life when you surrender to Him. 25 years ago, when my husband and I left a position of where we were, great provision, all of that on staff at a great church, into the unknown, into the call of our destiny, we began traveling in ministry full time. No, you know, no steady paycheck. I kept waiting for the time for like the season of like, oh, our calendar is full. Like, you know, we 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 all all these things. And it was literally daily bread for many years. Like God always provided. We never lacked. I mean, uh, you know. He, he provided all of our needs mm -hmm. and, but it wasn't like, I never had it set before me. Like, okay, yeah. this is, it yes. was faith yes. and, and, yeah. and daily bread for us, yes. but God was faithful and he provided. Yeah. yeah. You know, my husband and I were, before we, before he owned a business, before I started writing, we were, I mean, living on, end, you know, the uh, ends meet for a while. Yeah. And neither of us, I mean, my husband is a go-getter. He's an entrepreneur. And so our life looks totally different. But when we were 19 years old, we had no, we had no perspective or idea of what life would be. At least I didn't. Mario had a lot of vision. I was like, okay, but wait, <laughs> I was like, okay, what's it going to look like? I'm like, I want to, I'm trying to see where we're going. Yeah. Um, but I, we, we've had to walk out our faith. I mean, a lot of my testimony and with, with good reason, because I, now I get to now I get to share it. A lot of my yeah. testimony is we had we had to believe God before we saw Him move. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Like we had to believe God when He was working one job, and I wasn't. At, you know, I was at home with Layla with um, postpartum depression yep. and couldn't get out of bed mm -hmm. and wasn't yeah. able to nurse her and couldn't find a job because I was too sad and stayed in the bed. And it was, I mean, yeah. it was sad. We had no family to help us. We'd moved away from from the people we loved. And so when you're in the middle of a storm like that, yes. there's um. The subtitle to my book is uh, Learning to Trust God's Heart Before You Can Trace His Hand. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a C.S. Lewis quote we took and formatted just a little differently, but essentially it's when we keep our eyes up, you're able to trust God's heart before you trace His hand because I want to learn to trace His hand quicker than right. I want to trust God's heart. But God's like, no, I need you to trust my heart before you start tracing my hand. Yeah. Even though the theology of remembrance is necessary and good, if that fails me, do I believe God to be good? That's going to be my anchor. There's a scripture in 2 Chronicles that says, if my people, this is God speaking to his people, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. I love that he says, if my people will seek my face. He's not saying if, you'll, if you seek my hand and what I can do for you, but if you seek me, his face represents his heart. His face represents um, uh, him, not what he can do, but who he is. And I, I love that promise that um, when we seek his face, when we seek his heart, when we, we wanna know him in a greater way, um, that, that really is the greatest miracle of all, to know the Lord, the fact that that we are invited into relationship with, with the God of all, the God of heaven and earth, um, that we have been invited into relationship with Him. You know, it it is, um, it it's incredible. And the, the greatest experience of my Christian life has not come from the things that He has done for me, but has come from knowing Him. And that's the invitation. Because ultimately, his hand is connected to his heart. That's like right. the reality of God is yes. that he's always going to come through. This yeah. is what he does. This is who yeah. he is. Yeah. He's always been faithful, always will be. So we we do know yeah. there's a track record with God. He is the God of miracles, of signs, yes. and of yes. wonders. He's yes. the God that shows up. He's the God that makes a way yes. out of no way. Right. He's the God right. that allows you to speak to mountains and mountains be moved. Like, this is the God that we serve. He's yes. the God that will call you from a burning bush. He's yeah. the God that yes. will wake you up and call yeah. your name and let you run to your uh, spiritual father and then come back. And yes. he's the, he takes yes. time. He's on the journey. He's like, mm. this is the God that we serve. And I think that when we understand the track record of his hand, it's more impetus, right, for us to trust his heart. Yeah. Yes. You know, right. and I, yes. I think what we see in the scriptures is that Jesus starts it out with signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. He yeah. goes, 
I'm look at what I can do. And yeah. now come get closer yeah. right. and follow my heart. Yeah. And so I don't I think I think it's not a, a question of is it wrong to be to, to to get yeah. the hand? Yes. The Lord will do the hand first. I mean, mm -hmm. God did this with the children of Israel in Egypt. Signs and wonders, right? With um, in, he he in Egypt, to. he had to he to had help to. them. Absolutely. But now, once you've seen, yeah, right. Now, once you've seen what I've done, are you now going to trust my heart? Are you going to come yeah. out with me into this wilderness? Yeah. Are right. you going to turn yes. back to the? The people were like, "Take us back to Egypt, child." Literally, you know what? We, at least we had good food. Oh, yes. There's nothing to eat, and people love to eat. But I'm like, you know, it's it's after that you yes. go to go. Okay, now let me see the heart of God, and the God sh and God shows you yeah. His heart in the wilderness when yeah. it seems like His hand was gone, even though He was right. giving them daily manna. Even right. though, you know, right. he, His hand was still the the pillar of cloud by yes. day, that fire by night. Yes. He was with them. Their shoes never wore out. Right. He was still the God of miracles, signs, and wonders, but it just looked a little different. Yeah. Personally, in my life, the miracle that happens is in those moments where I am on my face before the Lord, crying out to Him, That's seeking it. Him for direction, having to hear His voice speak to me and me yes. walking in faith. That is a miracle that I have been able yes. to drown out mm. the noise of the world yes. and, and have time, intimate time with my father yes. who loves me, who wants and, and get to, to commune with him yes. in that way. That's the miracle. Like I don't ever want to belittle mm -hmm. what that is. No, that true. that since I didn't get the sign, it probably drew me deeper. Yeah. And by being drawn deeper to him, yes, that's I'm good. in more intimate relationship with yes. him. That's so good. That's yes. the miracle. Yeah. You know, I think it is okay to ask God for a sign. I do think that there are moments where we have to check the motives of our hearts and where this question is coming from. Sometimes, like uh, the man who said, I believe, but help my unbelief, right? That there are moments in us that go, Lord, I know that you can do something, but I'm struggling. And if there's any part in me that's that's not that doesn't have enough faith, um, I'm asking you to help me. I know that you're the answer even to my unbelief, right? Um, I think if we're asking from that place, that's a beautiful place. Sometimes we're asking for a sign because we don't want to be obedient to the word that God has already given us. We don't want to pray. We don't want to wait on an answer. Um, but the Bible says that they that wait on the Lord shall renew new their strength. There's strength that comes from waiting. And sometimes the Lord will have us to wait. Sometimes the Lord will have us to just take him at his word, right? He won't give another sign or another wonder. He'll have us to take him at his word and trust that he's going to do what he's going to do. Either way, I believe God is going to show up, but there's a maturity, right? In, in this. And we see that God generally starts out with signs and wonders. And as things go on, we have to really rely and rest and lean on His Word. There's a deepening in the maturity of our faith Yes, when we walk this out with God. There's like this very holy awareness of the necessity and reality of wonders and signs. Yeah. But also there's this very raw relationship with Jesus. There's this graduation from like milk to steak, right? Mm -hmm. When you're walking mm -hmm. with Jesus. And you're right, there is a point in our faith where where God not only desires for us to be there, but we have to get we have to get with low with Jesus to trust him. Yeah. We have to get low. We have to get to the place where we're at the end of ourselves again yeah. so that we yeah. can grow in our faith, so that we aren't living and dying by the sign and the wonder and we meet Jesus and have an encounter with his heart. And even if, I mean, there used there was a song a long time ago, but it was it it talked about even if you know, the things that I'm praying for, the things, the miracles I want, even if you don't, yeah. I will still trust you. Yeah. You are still good. And that can't just be words that we say. We have to have journeyed with him to yeah. believe yes. that no matter what, even if even if we don't get the miracle, we talked about yeah. that earlier. God will yeah. test us in mm -hmm. that. It, yeah, it's the, you know, the Hebrew boys in the fiery yes. furnace. Yes. Yes. Our, my God is able to deliver me, but if He does, even if if He doesn't, still we won't bow. You know, um, we got to have that. If not, <laughs> that if not faith, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that He is who He says He is, and I and I, we, you know, the patience of the Lord to, yes. and the you know the the goodness of God to bless us and give us blessing and do these things for us and draw us into relationship, yes. Yes. and then and then give us the opportunity to grow in our faith and to, to deepen um, our trust and our walk with Him.
That's so true. When you when you talk about Jesus drawing us in, I think sometimes I know for me at least I forget that 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 is true. Jesus draws us in and mm-hmm. invites us in with these little glimmers of like grace and hope mm-hmm. and yeah. reminders of his gentleness when yeah. we're in seasons like that because he's kind. He's a father and he's yeah. good. He's yeah. a shepherd. Mm-hmm. He's walking with us. Yep. Oh, Thinking that. of um, Nathaniel under the fig tree, yeah. yes. you know, when Jesus said, I saw you under the fig tree. Mm-hmm. And um, I actually was just watching an episode of The Chosen that That's was so this good. the episode of Nathaniel under the fig tree. And Jesus said, I saw you mm-hmm. there, you know, and, and then Nathaniel one, you know, was like, in awe and wonder. And he's like, I'm, you're going to see the, the heavens open and, and angels ascending and descending on the son of God. Like you're going to see greater things than this. You know, Mm -hmm. he's so good to us to, to speak to us, to show us that he's there and he sees us where we are and he draws us into deeper relationship. I think that speaks to his heart. Mm -hmm. That's his heart. That that's his posture towards his kids is to want to be with us. And if we're seeking God's heart, right, we're, we're going after his heart. There's going to be a point, a point in our faith where we begin to get to know God in that way. Intimacy with the Lord is the key to everything in a relationship with him. It's a key to, um, to knowing him more. It's the key to um, him working in us, him, uh, you know, pruning us, him um, shaping us into um, a, a woman or man um, that that he desires us to be. Um, and so, I mean, it, intimacy with him is, is really, it's the key to uh, a beautiful, fulfill, a fulfilling Christian life, a fulfilling life of a disciple. I wonder if sometimes, and this just might be me, but I wonder if sometimes this, the, the limiting belief about who God is, who do we know God to be in our lives? Yeah. Do we know him as compassionate? Do we know him as father? Do we know him as comforter? Because if we don't, it's hard to trust his heart. That's right. Well, I want to say too, I think attached to his heart is his hand, but I think there's like both hands. So go with me on this metaphor. (laughs) Like one hand is the hand that like gives. The other hand is maybe a hand of correction, a rod in that hand. Pruning. Or, yes, pruning. Or like there's a foot attached to that hand. (laughs) And we just sometimes get kicked in the booty a little bit. But I think it's okay because I, what, the Lord wants to do, I think any good father, we know this, is going to say, no, I'm not, I'm not going to give you that oh, because so good. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, have you yeah. learn how to be content, right? Oh, yes, how to yes. abound and how to be a base. Like yes. I'm, I want to give you a greater experience. And I, I think about when we read, I don't know if we really always are aware when we read the scriptures and even in the book of Acts, you read about the apostles who get, who have this message and they they love yeah. not their lives even unto death, yes. right? We miss that. Yes. Even unto death. Even unto death. Um, they were willing to lay down their lives because they knew it wasn't just here. There was something eternal. But they also recognized we're going to be persecuted it's be right. and it's okay. Yes. And and God has actually allowed this. Yes. And he scattered them. So yes. even in that scattering, what we learn is that that's what allowed the gospel to go further. Yes. It was God's plan. It was, it was a part of his so plan good, for them to be yes. scattered. And yes. although it was painful, so I'm good. sure it was hard. Absolutely. I'm sure it was hard to say goodbye to people yes. that, yes. that we've been fellowshipping with for years and years and years. And yes. that's my belief for you and your family that like even in the, in the shifting and the moving is that there's there's a greater thing that God wants to do. Yes. And, and I'm not keeping this here anymore. I'm sending them out. Sing we right. look at James. We look at John. Yeah. The man was boiled. I mean, like there's yes. just, there's so it's much right. that happens. And I'm yes. not, we're not saying that that was the, like God's like desire for them. But sure. I think when we look at God's heart, it's, it's bigger than just us. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I have somebody that I was in a disagreement with a little while ago. And the Lord told me, he's like, I'm not just on your side. I'm on his side too. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, yeah. but, right, right. <laughs> but I was grateful because it helped right. me yeah. to sit in a different position. I'm not yeah. going to hold whatever, you know what I mean? Like God is not just for one of us. Come he's for on. all of us. Right. And what if what he's doing in my life, which seems like it's not his right. hand, it's just, it's really giving the left hand. Um, yeah. and, right. and just a little bit of like, no, I'm, I'm conforming you into yes. my image. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, and I don't know if we always want to admit this, sometimes we are that, um, that clay in the potter's hand that he's willing to mar and yes. bring back down to a clump yeah. or a lump and say, all right, now I want to do something else. Let's do it again. 
what we think, right, our thoughts are informed by the things we've walked through. This is so important, you guys. Our wounds, right, our wounds that we've picked up from somewhere. And so our wounds, oftentimes left undealt with, become our thoughts. And then our thoughts become our behaviors. And limiting beliefs about God are found there. Right? When, when we don't know how to untangle what we've been through from God's character, they become one and the same. And truth is, is that our circumstances don't inform the character of God, you guys. The character of God is what should inform how we know God, how we move through our circumstances. That's what should inform it. And so as we are walking through limiting beliefs, this is what we ought to do with God. God, help me to break out of the ways that I'm used to thinking about you and about life. Help me to know your character, your, 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 your heart for me, right? Your virtues, your characteristics. Because when we don't know God for who God is, we'll allow our own thinking and our own wounding and our own assumptions about God to become our limiting beliefs. And so in the name of Jesus, just give to God your limiting beliefs. Give to God what you even think about Him and say, God, help me to see you for who you are. Help me to know you for who you are. God, I want to seek your face. I don't want to live from a place of fear and scarcity. I don't want to live from a place of doubt. Give it to Him. Be honest. He already knows. And begin to live from a place of faith even before you feel it. Remember, feelings are going to have to follow our faith sometimes, right? And so resolve in yourself to break out of the limiting beliefs, the, the thought patterns that have kept you ho the hostage. In, in the name of Jesus, you're going to grab them, you're going to throw them to the side, and you're going to ask God to renew your mind. If we're thinking about God's heart for humanity, it's about restoration and reconciliation, bringing everyone yes. Yes. back to His yeah, heart. Yeah. You might be used in the kingdom in a way because the big picture he has is that it's for total restoration. Mm -hmm. It's for total reconciliation Absolutely. back to him. Yes. And so we have to so be good. okay that we might yes. be part of the story or part of the plan That's right. that was used in this way. And now it's broken. Or when a prayer doesn't get answered because you thought, well, it only needs, this is the way it has to be. And he's like, I've got so much yeah. greater oh, happening. I have yeah. something bigger happening. You don't even see the full picture. Yeah. You're needed in the picture. And because you're needed, and I know that, I can't give you what you're asking for. Yes. Yeah. But it is going to be okay because my heart for reconciliation is what is driving me. Oof. I want you to be happy. Yes. Yeah, I want you to be comfortable. Yes. But really my heart is for the world to be reconciled back to the Father. Yeah. That's so important. I think that we we get lost outside it. Like that's the that's the gospel. Like yeah, right. for God to love the world that He gave His only Son so that right we could have eternal life, but also heaven on earth to live out that 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 invitation for reconciliation and redemption. We get so inwardly focused in our right. lives that we lose sight of God's plan for that's His so, family. That's yeah. so good. We become so self-centered and so yeah. focused on ourselves and our plans and our dreams and our vision. And God's like, yeah. you, you're supposed to be living a life of surrender for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. a, a will, give me your yes and, I'll, and right. I will bless your yes as I see fit. Yeah. And it will take what you're saying now. And man, that's... Not even a, a reframe. That's how he. That's how he framed it. Yeah. We take yeah. it upon we, ourselves. We, 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 we need to reframe. We need to reframe. It's true. Yeah. In the way yes. that we see it, yes. because if we lived from the place of God, this my life is your life. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. This my my. You, I'm stewarding because you've asked me to. My breath is yours. This is yeah. all yours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we wouldn't have any any angst when he asks us then right? To just go. Because yep. we know his plan is better. Now we're human and we've got a natural bent, a tendency to have anxiety, right? right. <laughs> and we want things to go our way, but that, yeah, this isn't about us. This no, isn't about exactly. It's so much more. So God has given you and I a very specific story, right? You have a story and I have a story. And that's literally the way that God invites us in to show the world that Jesus is the ultimate sign, the ultimate good news that we've been looking for all along. You and I get to go out into the world and say, I know Jesus. He is the best news. And I, and I need to tell you about it because He has changed my life. See, so much of our life is spent looking for signs and for wonders, and yet we have the greatest sign of all, and it's the life, the death, and the resurrection of our King Jesus. And that, that's like literally in you. It's dwelling in you because you follow God. And so today, as you're hearing about growing with God and encountering Jesus, 
remember that Jesus is your greatest sign, friend, and that you get to tell the world that. But you've got to believe it yourself first. So sit in the truth, marinate in it, and then let it overflow. I was reading the other day, it's a quote, it says, the Christian life is about the will of God, the desires of God, the purposes of God, and the glory of God. God, this is a hard, this is a hard saying right oh, here. Lord. God is not invested in our success. He is invested in his glory. Yes. <laughs> and so when we're completely surrendered Ooh, and we go, the goal good. is that my life is used for your glory. Come on. No matter what that looks like, right. God, I yeah. surrender. My life is right. yours. That's mature Christianity. Saying, that's big girl Christianity. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let me read the scripture that's been yeah. getting me through. Yes. So even in the midst of like what seems like ministry and things being tough, yeah. Hebrews 6, 10, for God is not unjust. So this is like, this is the goodness even in he's yes. getting his glory. But for God is not unjust so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name and serving the saints as you still do. Mm -hmm. So there's still a reward. Wow. That's when you understand his heart. Yes. You understand that he's just. Yeah. He's kind. He's yeah. good. He there's yeah. still and that's to his glory. Yeah. You know what yep, I mean? Yes, it's yes, like, yes. hey, it might not look the way you thought that's it was going to look. But that's when it. you honor me, when you serve, when you mm -hmm. come up under yes. my vision and, and and do what I've commissioned you to do, I'm always going to reward you. I yeah. love that. Even if it's not on earth. That goes back right. to, we talked about Jeremiah when it says, boast in this, that you understand and know me, that yes. I am the Lord that exercises loving kindness, yes. justice, and righteousness. That's what he wants us to understand and know about him. Yeah. Those three things, he he exercises loving kindness, justice, and righteousness. Mm. And, and I love the invitation mm. that we can understand and know him because what we really know is we can't ever fully know him. And I mean, and to, there's just, I mean, we, right, we could right. know this we'll backward and forward. Right. 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 Yeah. So more then opinions. I find it interesting that those are the things he wants us to know about him, yeah. his loving kindness, mm -hmm. his, his justice, but his righteousness. Yeah. You know, it's just beautiful. Well, the will of God, right? What What is the will of God? It's to love God and love His people. Yeah. And we, I think we overcomplicate the will of God for our lives. It's actually much more simple than I think we make it out to be. It's in the scriptures. You literally are to love God and love His people. Yeah. And the Great Commission, the Great Commandment is wrapped up in that. Mm -hmm. And so when we are thinking about our lives as a living sacrifice, it's actually just for the glory of God, period. And that's it, to love God and love His people. Living from that offers us so much freedom in the way that we move about our lives. So what do you do? Um, now, you know, I'm always asking yeah, the questions. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Because I could imagine someone maybe sitting at home saying, well, I do love God and I love people and I love my family, right? I'm, I'm pregnant and I'm about to, or my baby needs this. And they start to think about maybe the people that they're attached to or what they, or how they think it's going to be best, mm -hmm. you know? So maybe it's not a selfish request to right. see the hand of God. Yeah. Maybe it's they're praying for yeah. a loved one yes. who's sick or struggling. And it's like, God, I want to see yes. this sign, this wonder. How do we deal with those moments when it's not just the the me thing or like, right, make me famous, right. Jesus, give me a million followers, you know, yeah. on, on TikTok. Oh, so what, 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 what is it when it seems to be outside or it seems to line up with yeah. the will of God? Mm -hmm. And then you don't get it. And you, and you don't get it. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the thing. What comes to mind is John and John 14. Basically, what Jesus is saying is, I'm going to ascend, but I'm leaving my spirit yeah. And greater. Not leaving you alone. I'm not leaving you alone. Greater yeah. works will you do than even I was able to do. Now, does that mean that we can heal more and we can, what I actually think it means is there will not be nothing that can happen on earth as we know it without the spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit is left for us to see things that would be unimaginable without the Holy Spirit, because that is where heaven invades earth. Yeah. That is where we see it. So to the person who is saying, you know, but I have real needs. I need to see my brother-in-law healed. I need yeah. to see, you know, my, I've gotten a bad diagnosis for my child, whatever, all yeah. those things. Then we have to believe as believers, we have to hold on to the truth that in his graciousness, when he ascended to heaven, he left his Holy Spirit here because yes. he knew we would need him to, to move in the miraculous. We would need him to do things on our own yeah. might we can't do. Yeah. And so I, it encourages me. I actually don't, I don't look at it like, well, you know, it's just supposed to be all about knowing his heart. I think there's, there's actually a, an activation of his power mm -hmm. 
that he gives us, that we can have access to that kind of power. No, for sure. I also, I think that for, for the woman who's trying to reconcile that, what's worked for me in the midst of just, my brother passed away about two years ago. It's when, It was one of the turning points in my faith because it was supposed to be like this, this, it, my book came out, my brother died two days later. It's, wow. and I'm still, it's, it's such a pain point in my faith. And I talk about it a whole lot. It was just, it's going to be two years, but I'm, I'm walking this out in real time as I show up in ministry. So I'll use it as, as my own lived life, right? My ministry. I think sometimes what I've had to do is I have had to trust that God knows the answer better than I do. Yes. Like it's just, it's as simple and as practical as that is. Like I've had to tell my myself, like my, my like spirit rise up in me, Jesus, remind me that mm-hmm. you know better. And yeah. even when, even when my desires align with his will, even when they're like the right kind of prayers, right? Like right. you want the best mm-hmm. for his people and you want, and you don't see it. I'm like, God, I have to believe that you know best mm-hmm. because you're, because I want to believe that you're good. I had a letter the other day from uh, a mom who has been praying for her child for over two years. And her question to me was one that I understood very well. She said, you know, I've heard you speak before, Sheila, and you've said that you believe that God is all-powerful. You also said that you believe that God is, is love, the very essence of love. And yet he hasn't answered my prayer for my child, and I don't understand. Did I do something wrong? I think that is just an attack of the enemy. When we when we feel that accusation that maybe there's something wrong with our life or we didn't pray in the right way or we don't have enough faith, there are seasons in life where it does seem as if the Lord is, is quieter. It does not mean that the Lord is not with you. It does not mean that the Lord doesn't hear your prayer. It does not mean that God does not care. So I would just encourage you, do not allow the enemy. He's called, in Scripture we're told, he's the accuser of those who love Jesus. So he's going to tell you, you know what? No wonder God answers that lady's prayer and didn't answer yours. You know, that's because God loves her more. No, he does not. God loves you completely. And don't stop praying. In the book of Revelation, the letters that are written to the church, that Jesus speaks to the church, in one of the letters, he's saying, hold on, keep the faith. And the whole book of Revelation is a picture of keeping of John, Mm -hmm. the one who wrote the book of Revelation, the one who had these visions and encounter to endure, to keep the faith, to hold on. So I would say continue to hold on to him and believe that he is who he says he is. He's not, you know, a man that he should lie. Um, And he truly, if we fully trust him, that um, our life is in his hands, our family's lives are in our, is in his hands. We have no idea what the future may hold and how his plan is going to, going to unfold as we continue to believe in him and trust him. Amen. I think about the person that you're you're talking about that could be watching. You know, signs and wonders are like a mercy act mm-hmm. of God. Yeah. They're yes. an act of mercy. I believe He brings a sign or does a miracle at just the moment that you need it. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think He reveals Himself to us at just the moment that we need a deeper understanding yeah. because He's with us in this journey. Yeah. He knows that we need Him. And sometimes the, He'll see best fit that it come through this miraculous thing. I'm, I'm believing for a miracle for my brother-in-law. In the midst of believing for it, though, where he's taken me is on the journey to know he's good. Let's just pray because I, I know that there are men and women watching who it would be a lot easier if they could just see God's hand, if the, if the issue could be just fixed right now. But if they're in a moment of waiting, for that, if they're in that, I call it the dissonant chord, mm. where it just hasn't resolved yet, yeah. and they just need the peace of God to come over them. Yes. They just need the peace of God. Yeah. Father, we just pray your peace, the peace that passes all understandings to whatever situation is happening in every person's life who is listening and watching, that your peace would come and that they would know, God, that you see them You are the Elroy, the God that sees. You know their situation. You know their desperate cry. And Lord, not only would your hand be there to guide them, but would you reveal more of who you are to them, that they would see and understand your heart, that you are loving, you are kind, you are long-suffering. Your unconditional faithfulness to us is good. And Lord, we just 
honor you and give you all the glory because we decided to take this journey with you. We said yes to you and we love you no matter what the outcome, no matter what we get out of it. We love you because you are worthy of our praise. God, we thank you, Father, that you allow us to seek your heart and that that we can know you, we can have an intimate relationship with you. Father, would you right now meet every person who is desperate to hear you, to see yes. you, would you meet them where they yes. are? In Jesus' name, amen.